Yeah, today I just want to talk to you on CARICOM. We have a problem with that CARICOM thing that is going on. Because what we have now, we have a situation where in almost all of these islands that are members of CARICOM, except a few, the people are suffering. The people are suffering. The leaders are manipulating the people. And over the years of independence, we have seen a decline in the, in the quality of life of some people. What we have is a situation where we have to deal with that CARICOM issue. Because a lot of the leaders, they're hiding behind that CARICOM thing. They have to go to CARICOM meeting and all of that. But before we go all of that, all of there, we need to realize that the members that make up CARICOM are some of the same culprits that we have in our respective countries that are causing all the problems, you know. These are the same people for years that have been causing all the problems. And what they have done is they have been able to satisfy the wishes of a lot of the masses who really do not know what is going on. They have been able to manipulate a certain percentage of the masses who really do not know what is going on, who have been impoverished by the same leaders. And so we have them emerging as leaders, heads of states, and going to CARICOM. But CARICOM is supposed to be representing the interests of the islands that they represent on a bigger forum. It is supposed to give them more preeminence to talk to the bigger countries. But when you look at, let's look at some of these things that we see. We have all these problems, but CARICOM never seem to be seen and handling these problems. Now, so my thing is, is, CAR is CARICOM really a useless organization or useless, yeah, a useless organization in the Caribbean? Is, CAR is CARICOM really a shitty organization that really is not necessary or is necessary but is not doing what it's supposed to do it is not beneficial to its people is CARICOM useless all right one of the biggest problems that we have in the in the caribbean is that the biggest the brightest the greatest ideas that a lot of these islands have these countries have in order to improve the economic standing is real papi show and foolishness. The, the brightest ideas that these guys have is to sell our passports to rich foreigners, to sell our lands to Chinese people for cents on the dollar, and to make, um, make people, foreigners who are rich, who are wanted and in their countries make them ambassadors some of these guys rich rich guys wealthy guys sometimes all oil guys guys with oil money or other monies they are wanted in their country of origin and so what they do sometimes is they make deals with some of our leaders and these guys give their leaders millions of dollars for themselves and they just give them some they give them some position that really does not make any sense ambassador <laughs> ambassador of, of of your country um representing your country concerning wales <laughs> ambassador to wherever um representing your country on seaweed <laughs> representing your country on rats or anything <laughs> so these guys these people we call our leaders in the caribbean these guys, the best ideas they can come with to raise our money to push the economy forward is these ideas. Sell your passports, sell your land to Chinese for nothing, give some rich fellas that are wanted in their country some ambassadorial position. Now, how do we solve this problem? How do we solve these problems? There are many things that we need to do, but one of those that I think that um, we really need to consider is that we need to get some of our people who are overseas back to the country to invest. 
we have had people who left the caribbean shores for like decades 20 years 30 years or even less and who have done very well financially and some of those people are men of knowledge and skills and it is time that some of these people come back to the caribbean in order to invest and to start up companies and businesses um, that will employ their people and push the economy forward now what we have is in a number of cases some of our leaders that we have in the caribbean are not um, open-minded to let those people come in they always try to find a way i feel like um a lot of caribbean leaders i think that they are intimidated by the most successful um people that we have among us and there have been people who come from overseas from the caribbean who have the money to get businesses done and they have been discouraged and frustrated by some of these very leaders that we have but these very leaders will easily accommodate people from other countries like europe america and all of those places and so it has to do with the fact that some of those guys um they want they want their hands to be greased financially if they were to go on to projects and some of our people sometimes are not willing to do that but the solution really is that we need to get we need to get our people back to these caribbean countries where they can invest in um in their own country in, in their own um people because if it continues that way, the CARICOM leaders that we have will sell out all our lands, will really mess up our, our, um, the future of our country. And when those people who have been successful overseas want to come back to the country, there will, not be in, there will not be space for them. They will have to go back into the sea and live. Again, is CARICOM really useless? Is CARICOM shit? Now, what we have now is a situation in a lot of these CARICOM countries, Caribbean countries that are members of CARICOM and all of and the rest. What they have now is a situation where all of them now want to decriminal, decriminalize marijuana. But we remember those of you who are old enough, or if you're not old enough, let other people tell you. In, the, in times past, in the 70s in the 80s 60s 70s 80s the caricom people that we had our leaders they were busy um mistreating the rastafarian population and in some cases even murdering them killing them we have situations where the the um the rastas would go deep into the woods some of these places these guys had to walk from sometimes for more than an hour to get into the interior because they wanted to live away from civilization and so the police under this with the support of the government even the um councils that call themselves christian councils all of them because they kept they kept silence silent when it was happening these police people went into the bush and they mistreated the rasters and they cut their hair without their approval murdered some of them and what we have now is a situation now this same thing that they were, they were killing the people for them now and their children are trying to advocate for the decriminalization of marijuana but they are the ones who are at the forefront of the discussion we really want to see more Rastafarians at the forefront of the discussions concerning the um, decriminalization of weed in the, in the CARICOM countries. What we have is a situation now where all the bald heads want to come forward at the negotiating table and we do not see enough Rastafarian coming up. So what we have is, I think it is fair. The solution is fair there we in these countries have blood on our hands the blood of rastafarian men and women who were killed by police for the same thing that you are trying to profit from now and the only reason that they're trying to decriminalize marijuana is not because they're so much in favor of doing it and the people need to understand that right now there is a legal way for them to tax for uh, marijuana to be taxed they see that legal framework they see the avenue the way that um the state can make money through taxation 
and they themselves some of these guys who they see now how they themselves can enrich themselves by actually getting into um the production of marijuana for different um for medical reasons and others so now they're trying to get into it for the economic um benefits that they can derive themselves but what i believe need to be happening is we need to they need to carry come they need to go back to their books and go back and look at all the men and women that you killed in the, for marijuana that you shot that you paralyzed their children could not survive could not survive because the 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 main breadwinner the the, the, the the man who was planting the weed you murdered them so it need to we need to have a situation now where if any money is going to come true is if any benefits are going to accrue as a result of the sale of of weed we need there need to be reparations to the to the ra to the children and to the the, the the grandchildren of these rasters that you all killed the blood is on your hands caricom these are the things that you need to be doing i really wonder what this caricom people talking about when they go to meetings in fact when you really look at it i think too many times we in the caribbean the educated people in the caribbean they rely too much on government people to give them a job i believe what hap what needs to happen is people who are um uh, who think that they know what's going on educated people need to just start uh ngos start your own your ngos and fight and negotiate on behalf of your own people because clearly the um the power of some of these governments in the Caribbean, CARICOM need to be curtailed. I believe that some of these governments have too much power, and their powers need to be curtailed. And some and the solution to one or, to to all of that is that we we the people need to have more NGOs to look after the problems and the situations and the circumstances of our own people, and stop relying on those guys who sell all we have for um for money that they they alone can benefit from. The ball heads are running forward now, and the solution is to make sure that these ball heads um, do not benefit, but the um, the people who lost their children, who lost their fathers in those um, situations with this police benefit. Now we have a situation again, whether or not Caricom is shitty or not, and I know that some of you people like to say what people didn't say. And so have me in the in the in the correct um in the correct um project um trajectory. Do not go and say what I didn't say. All right, is Caricom ch shitty or not? All right, in most of in some of these Caribbean countries, most of them, for the longest while, what we have had is Liat, Leeward Island Air Transport. Now Liat has been the the um the airline for many many years, decades. That has transported people throughout the Caribbean, which is a good thing. But upon when I look at Liat, it it served the Caribbean in terms of trying to transport people um, physically. That was a good thing. But it seemed to me that Liat is um, Liat has placed the Caribbean people at a disadvantage in some perspective. And some of that has to do with manipulation on the part of the board members that they had. Now, it is alleged, it is alleged that one of the problems that Liat had was that there were certain locations that, or certain hubs, that they made it compulsory for people to kind of transition in those hubs principally because they wanted um people to they wanted leah to pay landing landing fees in those places so they did not mind inconveniencing people or just getting um people out of their way of um travel just because they want to land in those countries so that these countries can collect um landing taxes the the other thing that they did that was um wrong it is alleged is that and other it has been said really even the the old the people who applied said that there are other um small airline companies that are from the caribbean who applied to be able to plow um 
to fly through the Caribbean islands just like Liat is doing. And some of them did not even really want to go through um, all of these countries. And they were denied. They were denied because there were certain members on the board that um, were just protecting the interests of some countries. And then when they put out their report, they make it look like the hurricane, um, too many hurricanes, that's what affected them. That's one of the reasons. But the reason why these guys were putting those people out, um, were not giving those, issuing licenses to those people that were applying, is because they did not want any competition. They wanted to continue making people pay huge amounts of money to move from one country to the next. There are many times in the year where it is cheaper for you to go to the United States as opposed to flying to a country, a nearby island that you can see with your own eyes. There are sometimes you can stay in your country depending on where you are and just look at other um other other islands. Sometimes you can see vehicles pass um driving in other places depending on how good the weather is. And imagine it is cheaper to go all the way to the United States on an airline than going than traveling to a place that you can see with your own eyes. And so what the, what has happened, I believe, is that this um Carib Carib these CARICOM leaders have made it difficult for poor people um to survive because what happened is if you could just leave one country and go to the next so somebody can live um live let's say you can live um you can live um St. Lucia and go to Guyana and buy some goods and come back to your country and sell it or live wherever you are and go to Jamaica buy some goods and go back and sell it they never, these are some of the reasons why I think that, that these things are happening. The other thing is, if I am wrong, I cannot be wrong in that, in that scenario. Look at how long the Caribbean has been going on with um, full independence. And there is not one ferry service that can take passengers and goods from one island to the next. Some of these islands, as I said, are so close that you can be, depending on where you are, you can see um, vehicles moving on, on, on another island. And it was only um, Matnik, France, French people, who came with that idea of um, Express Diesel to move their, their people from Matnik to St. Lucia because they are, there is some there are St. Lucians working in Matnik and so that was an opportunity for them. And also from Matnik to Guadeloupe because Guadeloupe is a, is a, um, is a territory of, of, of France also and Dominica and these places in between. But before that, I heard that there were other people who were trying to have ferry services to transport people within the Caribbean, and they were discouraged. Because what happened is if poor people could have moved their goods on a ferry from one country to the next, that would have changed the uh, socioeconomic situation of some people. So what has been happening in a lot of these Caribbean islands is that the big companies have been using their influence to... Um, use these um, politicians to ratify laws to put poor people and other business people that are lesser than them at a disadvantage. And we are, have seen clear cases of those situations where the government is being manipulated by some big businesses and they have people on the government boards to just to ensure that no other person get to do business, the business that they're doing. And so for a long time, the, um, it did, that's, if, if we had a ferry service moving among Caribbean countries, moving goods and people, and so moving goods and people, there would have been a more equitable distribution of wealth in the Caribbean. But really what you have in some of these Caribbean islands is sometimes five families control 90% of the wealth. And so what these people have done is that they have consolidated their, um, their resources and they have used the government to um, enact laws to put to destroy anything that will bring the um, economic benefit to other people or, or put them at a disadvantage in business. And so this is what is happening. If you have to really look into this, um, some of these CARICOM countries, most of these countries are controlled by sometimes five families. Five families, six families control 90% of the wealth. And what they do is they use these politicians to put laws to prevent you from rising in business. And so what, what, how do we solve these problems?
some of the things that we need to do is we need to sometimes um, get into a situation where we stop depending on these politicians for drinks and beverages and support during election time because they believe that once they have gotten you drunk or given you those things the obligation to you is no longer um, is no longer warranted what happened is um, they are able to manipulate the the people who who are really hungry, the people who are at a disadvantage, um, the people who are not really the thinkers of the population, which are more, which are a great percentage, they are able to manipulate those people. And what they do with that strength that they have gotten from the poor is they use it to the, to benefit the people who own businesses in the in the um in the country. And one of the things that I believe need to happen is just like in the United States where. Um, in, in the case of Obama, during his election um, campaign, he was able to raise a huge amount of money from ordinary folks. And so what I believe in the Caribbean is ordinary folks need to be contributing towards political campaigns, thereby um, reducing the influence, the financial influence and strength that these companies have. Because sometimes you have a company that may be probably financing probably half of the campaign. And so because of that, they, they, they are the ones who will, write the, the, um, who will decide what will happen in the country. Um, there is an expression that goes this way he who pays the piper um calls the tune and so what happened is we need to give even this 20 100 whatever we need to be starting to we need to start as a people to start putting money into these political campaigns so that we will weaken the hands of these big companies because these big companies are working against the people and all of that is being encouraged and supported and fueled by these same caricom leaders these same caricom leaders so look at how over all of these years the caricom leaders have put poor people at, poor people at a disadvantage by affecting your ability to move goods and services within the caribbean so is, are they shitty are these Caribbean? Are these um? Is Caricom shitty as an organization? The answer must come from within. People must be challenging um, the, um, these, um these, these leaders. So, one of the things that I want you to look at again concerning these Caricom leaders and these Caribbean people that are leading the country. When you look at it, these guys. These guys are not in favor of poor people. They are very good at trying to convince you and make you believe that they are in the favor of the people. In fact, some of these guys are people killing and destroying and maiming on their behalf. Now, these guys, these leaders that we have in CARICOM, what do they do? These guys want house allowance, vehicle allowance, telephone allowance, clothes allowance, entertainment allowance. Now, if we are giving you all these allowances, you do not deserve to get a salary because for the most part, what do, when people work normally, what do they work for? They work for food and you get, that allow, you get allowance for that. They work for transportation, you get allowance for that. People work, normal people work for, um, for clothes, you get clothes allowance. Normal people work for entertainment, you get entertainment allowance. Why do we have to give you all these allowances and yet we have to give you a salary? But on top of that, when, when you, after we have given these CARICOM leaders those things, you know what they do? The poor man who works to clean the drain or works in the ministry of um, some ministry, some ministerial department who works as a driver or something or some porter or whatever. You know, these guys, sometimes they do not even get... Um, allowances for for things that they need there are some places that will give them one shoe per year or two or uh, two shoes two pairs of shoes per year even when some people who who dig drains for the for the country or for the city sometimes they do not even give them enough pairs of boots for the year the other thing again is you'll have all these allowances the people, the old people who struggle, who work hard to establish the country. Some of these people were the ones who cut the roads, work in bananas and the cane industry that we had. And now when they get old, what you do? The amount of money you give them is almost like the money that you spend on a meal. The money that you spend on your lunch sometimes is more than what you give those people for a whole month and then you want to make it look like you all are doing such a uh, such, such 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 good service to the old 
and to and to the poor and to the people who are uh, who probably um uh handicapped and so on the amount of money you spend on a plate of food your meal your lunch is more than what you allocate for these people monthly and then you want to make it look like it's something that you're doing so these leaders of caricom if these people were really concerned about poor people all of these benefits that they were they trying to accrue and get for themselves they would have been more concerned about giving because when you look at it if we in the car if we in the caricom countries have to take off these allowances that um these guys have we would be able to help young people more we would be able to do more meaningful things like having places where young people can learn coding computer computer languaging lang um, learning to program computers huh? we would be able to have places where we could um where we would have trade schools to treat young to to train young people in the in, in in different trades we would have different um places where we could really um have modernized and modern farming equipment and tools modernize agriculture but when all of these millions of dollars go to giving these leaders and the and the ones under them all these allowances too many millions of dollars pay, are spent in caricom on giving guys allowances and the people under them allowances there's you never hear those guys talk about a cut in salary but yet they always want to freeze the salary of the civil servants they never want the civil servants to get more than um more um, more than what they get in but they always want to um their own um these are uh, benefits these allowances so when i look at it these are just a few situations i have presented we have grave situations that caricom should take and discuss even at their level at the level of the united nations and they never do those things we have had situations where even the president of france macron macron comes and complain that uh, um the women in africa um, are having too many children we have had situations where rich men in america talk about depopulating the earth and the caricom countries leaders are hearing those things and they never go or have they gone and discussed those things at their level at caricom do they go to united nations and talk about those things so right now we have a situation where we have this pandemic and a lot of people are not really willing to take the thing that we want them to take a lot of people are not willing to take the thing that you want them to take because we have heard from the time we were small we have heard people like um some of these big american guys talking about depopulation in recent time we have been hearing the big guys rich guys in america talking about depopulation we know of those things we know of what has happened to black people exper uh, um, medical experiments and we hear in them we heard the last time two french doctors talking about how they want to try the thing in africa because those people don't wear masks these are the kind of things that they talk about and the other one the one doctor is telling the other one oh yeah we will do that and i personally have a parallel study to do on aids where is caricom to represent their people so right now all this caricom country the people are lost the people do not know what to do because the people have seen so many of those guys want to destroy them that they do not trust the thing that you want them to take so are you shitty people were you representing your people all along a lot of you people we had when we had this colonization these colonizers running our country we were praying for the time the old people were praying for the time where their children and their grandchildren would be able to assume the affairs of their state and we have had you people as leaders in the caribbean and caricom at this juncture who could represent your own people and what do you do you rob your people more you mistreat your people more than what the white people were doing you rob your people you put them at disadvantages when they complain you try to prevent them from getting jobs in your country we have a situation where a lot of times we lose some of our good people they go overseas when president trump call um some places shithole country i see some of those some of our islands some of the leaders are trying to engineer our countries into shithole countries our people have to move and run to other countries and work 
because you frustrate them. You frustrate the, the smart and the wise people that we have. Whereas people like Vladimir Putin has put millions to cause his scientists to leave England and those places to come and do research in Russia. You people are chasing away your people. So I'm asking in closing, the CARICOM, is CARICOM shit? Is CARICOM shit, really? Is it shit? The answer must come from within. You see the same bad representation you all give in your countries is the same thing you all take to CARICOM. Some of you all believe that is you all, you all alone that can do that job. Let me tell you something. There come a time that thing has to change. There will be a time when the people will not need you all. There will be a time when you all will want to represent people and you will look and nobody will be following you all. A lot of your leaders in the Caribbean have, have failed your people and they will continue to fail your people. Some of you all think that you all are so special. Some of you all, the only reason that you all want to come in is for your own good. And the thing is, the people are blind, they cannot see. When you all are in opposition, some of you all, you all criticize everything the government do. Even in this pandemic, some of you all were saying that the government is supposed to close the country, close the, shut down the country. But now you all in power, you all don't want to shut down. Because you all, don't want, you all know that the country loses millions of dollars a day. So you all oppose everything. But when you all come there, it is just for yourselves. That is why even at the level of the Caribbean, in these individual countries, there are very few CARICOM countries that are serious. And we have to clap for these CARICOM leaders that are really serious and really pushing for their people. But the vast majority of these people, <laughs> the vast majority of these people are really useless. Really useless. And so sometimes, it, um, sometimes we have situations where somebody would leave. You would imagine you live in some the Caribbean and go and work in the Caribbean in another in another country controlled by French like Martinique. There are people that will leave Caricom countries and go to Martinique. I don't. I think Martinique um, has prob is probably now uh, a some kind of affiliated member or something like that in Caricom. But what I'm trying to say is our bona fide CARICOM countries. People leave those places and go to Martinique and other French controlled countries where the white man control things and do the same jobs and make more money and have a better quality of life. It cannot be. There come a time when these excuses have to stop. These excuses have to stop, man. We know that our countries have been ripped and robbed. And we know that we are entitled to reparations. Because we need to get our situation better than it is. And we are owed money. And so what happened is, uh, we truly, and I truly believe that um, the European countries, especially England, has stolen and taken a lot from us. That is why we, some of us are in the situation that we're in. But with what we have, we can do better. And it seems like some of these people are coming only for themselves. We're losing so many benefits when some of these guys lead in countries. We lose our lands to Chinese. We lose, our, um, uh, we lose everything that we have. We lose our human resources. They go overseas. And so at the end of the day, what we have is the, um, these leaders are...